So far, it was largely the philosophers who studied human consciousness, but a serious effort to understand consciousness and walk the path towards ultimate reality was made at the MIT World Peace University in the form of the world's first conference on consciousness, the ultimate reality. The third part of the consciousness is called pradnya, and this is intelligent part, intelligence. and uh, it is situated in the uh, state of deep sleep so this is not the dreaming so first state is of course the waking state then he talks about the uh, sleep but but dreams and this is the third state of uh, sleep which is um, which is deep sleep and there are no no dreams here so it's a deep sleep and, and the sleeping man entertains no desires or sees no dreams he becomes one and thus being a single mass of perception consisting of bliss and thus enjoys bliss and have uh, and has and having thought as his mouth so his mouth is our thoughts and uh, so this part of con- consciousness enjoys the anand yeah it it enjoys the anand so so this is the third part of the consciousness mouth so this is this is the lord of the world and the knower of all the 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 inner controller so he talks of the con- consciousness and um, yeah and the fourth part that he talks and you can see it in the seventh uh, those who can understand uh, sanskrit uh, in the in the seventh verse so so th- this is what he talks about the fourth part of the consciousness they consider the fourth pa- part as perceiving neither what is inside nor what is outside uh, and, and not even the things together Uh, not a mass of perception it is not a mass of perception uh, it is neither perceiving nor it is uh, you know perceived uh, uh, unseen and beyond the reach of ordinary transactions so this is completely a different level of consciousness and this is very interesting so there are three parts which are you know states of mind and the fourth part is is completely uh, ultimately different uh, and um, it is indescribable you know this is what it it is called it is indescribable it is unthinkable and um, uh, it's tranquil it it's a shiva and this is the name that is given to it it is shiva uh, and uh, that is auspicious and um, and it is nothing like that, uh, nothing like that we know and, and therefore it is called uh, uh, advait yeah so atma and and uh, shivam advaitam so it is called advait it is it is not nothing like different so these are now the four four states of the consciousness that uh, that this upanishad uh, describes having done this it comes back to the uh, to the first uh, discussion of the om and it again this uh, splits om into four different uh, parts so uh, with respect to the syllabus om the entire om is is atman itself as the consciousness is again is a self om also is in in its entirety uh, is 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 a um uh, is is atman but then om is again split into three categories you know the three phonemes and the fourth one is again you know invisible and beyond so the three phonemes what we call akar ukar or uh, makar in, in in marathi or in sanskrit the first part a is again the vaishvanara and uh, it is situated again in the waking state and um, uh, it it is so because you know it is sort of a Mm, so design either because of it is it is obtaining and uh, be, or it is because it comes first you know that is the reason uh, uh, what you call the uh, vaishvanara is is called first because it is sort of a uh, adi matva you know it is it's the it's the first the ukar which is the second part of the om now matches with the as you'll say see that it is it matches with the tejas that is the in between uh, in in between the akar Uh, uh, akar and the makar and uh, why it is called uh, ukar is because uh, uh, it is uh, so designed because of its heightening it, it it gives some sort of utkarsh you know uh, increasing the sort of a uh, active principle of consciousness which which uh, leads it takes you up and uh, also because it is uh, uh, what you call uh, ubhayatva it is in between akar and the makar so that is the reason it is also called ukar the third state uh, so and and it says that anyone who knows this for sure is heightened continuity of knowledge uh, which is uh, to become common and man without uh, and a man without the knowledge of brahman 
will never be born in its in its uh, in in the lineage of this person so somebody who understand this who is children will always be uh, will, will are the knowers of the brahman so here is a very interesting thing that uh, uh, when when it uh, when upanishads describe anything you know it's not just philosophy but you know something practical uh, as you as we often talk of upanishads as some philosophy but upanishads also have uh, material in them which is you know uh, recipes you know for for cooking food or you know day to day problems like you know how to get a son or how to get a daughter you know or how to get things done so it has uh, mantras and and ways in 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 which uh, this can be done and not only the philosophy the third constituent is again the makar which is uh, which matches with the pradnya and it is part of the very deep deep sleep um, again it is connected to the construction or the uh, apiti because it is also connected to the destruction and it says that anyone who knows this in the 11th verse uh, anyone who knows this uh, for sure uh, for sure to construct his whole world and become also its destruction so somebody who understand this can be a great creator and also a destructor of the world the fourth state it describes uh, is again without this constituent phonemes and is again the beyond the reach of the ordinary transaction cessation of the visible world it is auspicious and unique again shivam and advait so it matches consciousness with the world and splits it again into three parts and the fourth part which is you know invisible and beyond uh, so that is it is all i have to speak about this upanishad and uh, i hope uh, i'll have here like to hear some questions from you uh, later on um yeah so this is uh, what our ancient uh, forefathers in that sense uh, have been talking about consciousness and splitting the consciousness into four four parts so for the scientists of today this is a challenge to you know interpret and uh, see and test what what they have said uh, with this i thank you all for giving this opportunity and i take your leave thank you